Master send 18 with an anaphylactic reaction. Epi auto injector times two with no response. High dose Epi. Original BP 130 over 70 down to 110 over 50. Heart rate 148, O2 sat 84 and dropping. Okay, doubling dose. Heart rate at 160. Okay, but O2's up to 90. We got it. Trey? Trey, has anything like this ever happened to you before? No. Okay, any medical history we should know about? I had lymphoma four years ago. Okay. Dr. Sharp treated me. Okay, okay, we're gonna run some tests to figure out what causes this allergic reaction, and let's page Sharp. Dr. Sharp, long time no see. Hello, Trey. How are you feeling? Like someone who's almost murdered by crab cakes. Did you figure out why it happened? What is it? Trey, I have some bad news. The newfound allergies that you have are from your lymphoma, which means that it's returned. So it's back to chemo? The cancer has spread too aggressively for chemotherapy. It's beyond anything that we can treat. But we beat it. You and me, you said we beat it. It's not fair, and it doesn't make any sense, and I'm so sorry. How long? Four months, maybe six. Are your parents here? I'm gonna call them. No, don't. Trey. I don't want them to know. Have you got a minute? Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Would you say that I have narcissistic personality disorder? Because the, the DSM says that people who are narcissistic are typically quite haughty. Is that uh, how you would characterize me, haughty? Just give it to me straight. Am I haughty? You know, I heard a really good hypothetical to tell if you're a narcissist. Good, what is it? If a colleague shows up at your office during the workday, do you assume they're there for a reason or just to hear you talk nonsense? Lay it on me. His name's Trey. He's 18 and he wants to die alone. Have you ever heard of magical thinking? No? It's, uh, it's the belief that our thoughts can shape reality. The idea that our deepest wishes can somehow shape the physical world. Or sometimes we hope that if we don't talk about something, it won't happen. You think I'm in some weirdo headspace where if I don't tell my parents, I think I won't die? I think it's possible. <laughs> okay, no. That's not me at all. I'm fully clear on my situation. Okay. In six months, I'm toast. Yeah. So, why not tell your parents? Look, I'm 18. And three years of that was spent sidelined with cancer. So experience-wise, it's like I'm 15. I've got less than a year left, and I want to go live. That's great. Why don't you tell them that? If I did, Every time I leave the house, I'll have to deal with their sad faces. That I'm choosing to spend my last days with people that aren't them. Okay, I get that, Trey, but you know there are physical signs of cancer, right? Bottles of painkillers, your body will be in decline. So? So your parents are bound to notice that, don't you think? Terminal cancer is not really something you can hide. That's why I'm leaving. Leaving? I've been thinking about it all morning. My buddy Jem is doing a semester in Barcelona. I'm gonna take the semester off and go crash with him. Then after that, I'll go wherever. Peru, climb the Andes, mm. hopefully lose my virginity. It's okay to laugh. I'm, I'm not laughing. I... There's just so much I haven't done. So, your parents are gonna hear about you dying on a mountain thousands of miles away, all alone. And it'll be awful for them. Yeah. But it's gonna be awful for them no matter what. At least this way, it won't be awful for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go get your discharge paperwork. Okay. For your discharge, my mountain climbing friend. Sweet. 
Thank you. Oh. So listen, before you leave, if you don't mind, I have one more shrink thought for you. What do you say about making a video for your parents? What kind of video? Well, when you leave and you say goodbye, your parents aren't going to know that that's really goodbye. So why don't you give them that gift, the real goodbye? And then when I receive word that you've passed, I will make sure that they get it. Yeah, seems like a good idea. Great, okay, I'm gonna set this up. We'll get you off to Aconcagua in no time, my friend. What should I say? Uh, I mean, that's up to you, really, but um, try to remember that when your parents see this, they're gonna be dealing with the fact that you're gone, right? So, I don't know, maybe uh, tell them how you wanna be remembered. Five most important memories. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi. Uh, when you see this, I'll be gone. And uh, I thought you'd like to hear this message from me. Anyway, here are my five most important memories. Okay, here's one. The day I got diagnosed with cancer, we were driving home from the hospital and you offered to get me ice cream. And I was 15 and trying to be a tough guy or whatever, so I said no. But later that night, you brought me some anyway. Rocky Road. And it had been years since I'd asked you to get me ice cream, but you remembered my favorite flavor and that made me feel so good. Number two, playing toss the tray when I was little. Might be my first memory, actually. Getting tossed up in the air and not worrying if you were gonna catch me. And, uh, and Thanksgiving. When I tried to eat Dad's stuffing after chemo, but I got sick and I... And you had to help clean me up. I hated it, but I remember having this thought of, Jesus, what would I do if I didn't? If I didn't have you. Could you, could you press stop, please? How did you get him to change his mind? I didn't. I think Trey just realized that he can't finish his story without them. A year from now, we'll all be gone. All our friends will move away. And they're going.